they were on air. Now it does. Okay, hi, this is Brian Hawkins with HotBlogTips.com, and we're live on air right now with Mitch Mitchell from I'm Just Sharing, um, Cheryl Locke from Fuzzy Wuzzy and Pills, and we're short one blogging partner, newsletter partner, Ben Barden of QuickBlogTips.com. He's uh, a little under the weather today, and we hope he gets better and see him next week. Today's topic is, I have no idea what it is, let me read it, um, <laughs> content curation and social automation, the debate. So I'm assuming we're going to debate this because we never have the same opinion on these types of things. So uh, let's, let's start out with Mitch. When is it okay to schedule your social media activity? Well, what I do, pretty much the only thing that I have scheduled are my blog posts. I remember you mentioned, I mentioned last week that I write a lot of blogs, not just for myself, but other people. So I write a lot of things in advance. So I, WordPress allows you to post uh, date things. So I do that, but of course, I'm not always around when those things go live. So I use a plugin called Twitter Tools so that when my articles go live, they automatically post to Twitter. But that's the only automation I have. Uh, at any other time, if someone sees me on Twitter or Facebook or even LinkedIn, if you see an article all of a sudden from me, I put it up there. And I'm around at that moment. So that's the only automation I have. Well, that's about as limited as it gets. How about you, Cheryl? Do you do any automated automation as far as social media or your blog? On my, I've got certain blogs. In fact, most of the blogs I either own or write for have where it automatically posts to Twitter, and that's it. Uh, they also go to Facebook automatically through the RSS, one of the social RSS whatevers. But if you do it through, the only thing with that is, of course, your timing's off. Sometimes if, you're, if your people aren't on at the time where you're up in the middle of the night posting. Other than that, I, I don't go for the automation. I do use Buffer with one account, but those are, I've got three tweets that go out a day. And usually what I do is in the morning, I go through my RSS feed, pick out the three best stories, and so that they don't all go at once, I schedule them throughout the day. Uh, but that's just one account that does that. And none of those stories that go through Buffer are from my blogs. So, yeah, I'm not much in the automation, especially when it comes to people that are posting buku tweets like every hour and a lot of their own stuff. That's why I like G+, because you can't automatically post there and schedule it. Well, um, Ben Barden is not here today, but he did earlier this week write a post on this very topic, and he mentioned Buffer. And I like the way... I like the way he's using Buffer by, he does, you know, use it for his own, you know, messages or tweets or posts, but he also, I think he, I don't really recall the, the ratio, but I think it's like two to one that he's uh, tweeting or using it for other people's tweets and messages, maybe posts. So he's, he's like, it's not just self-serving with the way he's using it. He's also using it to build that social status, you know, the, the, interaction and I thought that was pretty good. I do use Buffer too. I've used it in the past. I kind of didn't and I don't know why. They, I started getting the emails to reminding me again. So you know, and, and those emails apparently work because I started using it. In fact, I just <laughs> filled it up and it told me I needed to go pro or whatever so I'll just wait for it to die down. But um, I use some other forms of uh, automation but not nothing. I don't believe I have that. I used to I my post go into Twitter, and I just don't now, and I don't know why. I'm just lazy, I guess. Never bothered to install it. I do use some other forms, but before I before I say what I what I do, what do you two think? And this isn't even on here, so this is a surprise question, but it just came to mind because I'm like that. Spur of the moment, shoot from the hip. <laughs> if you, uh, what do you guys think about people that use social media uh, automation? And I'm not referring to scraper sites or you know somebody that's just using all automation and they're not even really a blogger but you know people that use and stuff things like Triber and uh, well I'll get into curation in a minute but sites like that 
Tro like or Triber? Yeah. As far uh, I don't personally use Triber. I've watched their little video. I know you use it. And as far as I'm concerned, you can use it if you want. The only problem I have is when someone sends out 400 tweets or, you know, 30, 40 tweets through this Triber because from what I understand you can set them up to d be delayed by however long whatever you go in you find people that write common things and you check mark them and set them up to be tweeted out that would be great and fine the problem I have with it is you're not reading those articles and and Brian I guarantee you you are not reading each of those articles that you checkmark to be tweeted out. So therefore, you're not handpicking them. And when I click on one of them and I go, and it's not even in freaking English. That wasn't trying. Yes, it was. <laughs> or it is to some garbage scrapped looking spun article. Hmm. I'm not a happy camper. So my idea on, on sites like that is they might be great and fine if you limit and the one way to limit that is to actually read the freaking article and decide whether it's quality rather than quantity go for quality because I don't need to follow someone that tweets five million times if only one of the things that they tweet is going to be worth reading. Cool. What about you Mitch? And don't, so, and, and right. don't and do me a favor Mitch don't hold back like uh, Cheryl does. <laughs> no not, not me. Bra no, Brian you know, knew no. this was coming because we've had this discussion. Oh yeah so we, 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 me and Cheryl have been around this this before, so it's all good. No, but you know, Cheryl's absolutely right. Um, there are these people who retweet other people's stuff that they never see, and a lot of it turned out to be garbage. And it was a discussion that I had with um, Christy Hines earlier this year, where she kind of started recognizing that a lot of stuff that she was retweeting, uh, you know, automatically, she started looking at it and saying, "God, you know, there's a lot of garbage here." And that's now associated with my name. And, you know, she's big on the Internet and blogging and whatever. And she said, you know, I need to probably stop that because I'm retweeting a lot of junk. Uh, you know, I think that you bring more attention to the other sites than yourself if you're putting something out and it says either Triber or it says Visibly or any of those other things. And, you know, personally, I don't want to give credit to someone else when I'm trying to, you know, work on promoting myself. Um, and then there's plugins like there's one that's called Tweet Old Post, and you know I know a lot of people who use that because they're trying to refresh some of their old content. And you know I mean I've got years worth of content, and that might be kind of cool on one level, but on another level, some of the stuff that you see some of the people retweeting, uh, someone was retweeting something for a seminar that they were going to be doing, but they did the seminar in 2010. Well, <laughs> you know that was a waste. Uh, you know so to me. It means that either they don't know how to use the plugin to uh, select certain articles or they're just wasting time. And I guess that's kind of the problem with that kind of automation is because those people aren't really following what's going out. And, you know, the reason that I don't, wor I don't worry about the initial blog post that goes out, but those other blog posts later on is because I'm around for that. And if someone does happen to read it and wants to comment or talk to me about something, I'm there. And I think that works out well for me. So, you know, I think over-automating really makes it look like you don't care. I mean, it's kind of like the thing that we've always talked about with Twitter, where you sign up to follow someone. Next thing you know, you're getting a DM saying, hi, thank you for following me. Here, go read my blog. Go subscribe to my book. Go buy my product. Follow Immediately. me on Facebook, yeah. Yeah, I hate and that I stuff. Think, but the thing is, I know that usually late in the evening, it's late at night for Mitch. I see his news stories come out where he's been reading CNN or, you know, the different news sites. And I may see three or four tweets in a row of links to stories. But I feel very assured that Mitch has read those stories and then tweeted them out. I, <laughs> yep. Sparta. <laughs> We're going to go viral now. We got a freaking cat. We got a cat. Oh, my. My buddy. But that's the thing is, I may see three or four tweets in a row from Mitch to news stories, but I know that he is reading them and hand selecting them. So therefore, it doesn't bother me. You know, it's when you start seeing so many that come from these sites like Triber, and I'm like, 
you didn't hand select that. You don't know what you're sending, so you don't have any respect for me as a follower if you're willing to send out crap. All you're saying is, here, I'm yelling at you, and you'll take anything I send you because you're just so low on the totem pole. That's how, how I can treat you. Brian? Yeah, Brian. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got a cat here. <laughs> Sadie's seen the cat. Now Sadie's wanting to jump up here, and I ain't got room for all these animals, so I got distracted for a second. As far as the – say bye. Oh. As far as the uh, the archive tweets, well, I, don't, I don't even know what that's called. That drives me nuts, okay? I click on one. I read it. I'm like, oh, this looks interesting. Click on it. Start reading it, wasting my time, thinking I'm going to read it, post, you know, comment on it. The thing's like 18 months old. I don't like that. Something's in my glasses. Sorry, the, those two are fighting. <laughs> the cat over. here. The, the cat, yeah, and the cat and the dog are messing with each other down there. I, I, I should have. <laughs> I need my own personal office for this. But anyway. Um, You'd have to move your side. Yeah. Oh, where is my side? Oh, there it is. <laughs> and, and, uh, I, I want to follow up on something that you that you mentioned. Mentioned. I know. I know. You didn't mean it this way, but it sounded. You said, "Why would I worry about promoting other people when I'm trying to promote myself?" And I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hit you hard with that because I know. I know you well enough to know you are very helpful to everybody. But cause that's kind of the point. And I'm also gonna bring Christy into this. I love Christy Hines, but part of why she's where she's at is. I have to wonder how much of where she's at was from the things that she did that she may not be doing now. So a lot of us are sitting back spinning our wheels, you know, trying to take the the high road. But how many how many uh, bloggers have we watched doing the very things that we're talking about not doing, uh, shoot way up to the top? And then once they get the uh, the image they're looking for, hey, you know, I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to quit following 100,000 people, and I'm only going to follow 43 people. Okay, but see, you know? now that's – you're talking two different things, and I know what that is because that was Chris Brogan thing. And Chris Brogan was absolutely right on what he did for the reason that he gave. But, no, that's a different story. I'm not saying that you don't promote other people. For instance, I've, if Cheryl writes something good, I'll promote it. You – people are different. I don't need to promote visibly. And I don't need to promote Triber. I don't need to promote Dig. I don't need to promote Stumble Upon. Oh, I'm certainly I not. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not promoting yeah. any of those other companies. Yeah. And when you, I was going to say, Mitch, I see Mitch tweet out other people's blogs and yeah, posts all the time. I knew, I knew something didn't sound right when yeah. It, yeah. I was probably hearing you wrong. Yeah, because I'm, I'm yeah, you were petting the cat at the time. You weren't <laughs> well, yeah. listening. No, but you know, you see these links, and you click on the link, and it takes you to Visibly. And you see that, that bar, that toolbar at the top, and then you have to click off of that so you can go to that person's actual blog. That's the kind of mess I mean. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah. I don't I'm need to clarify that. those types of sites. I don't need to promote Technorati or Delicious or whoever else is out there. Um, I mean, I'm not hooked up with any of those sites. I don't need to promote them. And other people do that not because they think, at least I hope they don't think, that people are actually reading that stuff on those sites. Um, you know, usually people are promoting their own stuff on those sites. And maybe they see something else and they promote it through there because, you know, it's just there for them to do it. But I really don't know anybody, and you tell me if this isn't true, who goes to stumble upon to read a bunch of blog posts by someone else or to dig, to read, to actually read, to share, yeah, but to read it, no. I, I, you know, I was with Technorati for years, and I was with Delicious, and I never read a single post on any of those sites. I saw some of those posts. But I had already been to the blogs of those few people. So I just don't know. Go ahead. Say what you want to say. <laughs> oh, my God. I think we lost Brian. Oh, we like got Brian back. Hello. I'm here. <laughs> I'm seeing. I don't know what happened. It just went blank. Now I'm hearing an echo, and I see a picture of my logo. Uh, do you see that? You're on twice. Yeah. I wonder why. Because <laughs> you're just that freaking special. Oh, God. So did you did you not hear everything I said? Cheryl did. I think I heard I think I heard everything you said and I don't know what in the world's happened with Dig. It's really pissing me off. I don't know why. 
You can't even, I mean, you can submit something. You can't do anything else. I can't even find my freaking profile. So I'm, I just pulled it off of my website. Stumble upon, they, they have a good. To interact with some of the other blog posts and with the uh, you know the stumble feature which is a great concept you know a little bar and you just keep that I mean you get a random site you're not searching you're not it's it's a great concept the problem is it's not current content I don't want to the same reason I don't want to click somebody's archive tweet from 18 months ago I don't want to stumble their junk from 18 months ago either so if stumble pond could get their act together and this isn't a you know hate social networking thing or so I don't mean to do that but I'm that's just in my nature to criticize if <laughs> if they would uh, get their act together and and make maybe even an option stumble only current things within the last week or something I think a lot more people would use that feature to find other blogs to read and interact with so no but okay Cheryl I mean, let me just ask you, do you ever go to any of those types of sites? Well, that's the first question. And second, if you do, do you go to those sites with the intention of reading any of that stuff? No. The, the only thing I do is I've been taking a class, and we use Delish so that you can, when you find good stories, you can just quickly bookmark them and tag them so you can go back and find them later for using in other, in other ways but it's just basically to bookmark and tag them which is what the site was made for but I've read the I read the article on the site and then I'm just tagging it for later rather and lots of times I don't even do that I just put it on a notepad but if we're gonna be if we're working as a team then everybody needs to be able to get online that's it stumble upon I have to be bored out of my freaking mind and sit there and I go to the pictures I don't read articles. I go to pictures because there's some cool pictures on there. But that's it. Other than, you know, just like the old directories. Nobody goes there to read them. Exactly. You don't go there to search for blogs. You don't do any of that. It's, and I don't see Stumble traffic. I've had sites that have done well on Stumble as far as getting traffic, but they just bounce. Ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. So, they don't do me any good. Yeah, and I, I don't want to totally hate on those things. I mean, I really don't. I just won't, I don't use them. I, I, you know, like I said early on, when I didn't know what stuff was, yeah, you went and looked because someone said, oh, you should look at Technorati, you should look at whatever. Well, I looked at them all, and I just couldn't find a reason why I was there. And, you know, I know there's going to be those people, you actually said it earlier, Brian, who are going to say, well, you sign up with those sites because they're the ones that are going to help you get promoted, and they're going to help your blog grow faster and whatever. Uh, I don't know. I, I think that there may be a couple of people here and there who that might work for, but I just think of the numbers. And I'm thinking that if, if something like Dig had something, I heard they had at one point like 15 or 20 million people. Well, you know, if there were five to ten of those people you heard of, I'm thinking that was a good ratio. We certainly didn't know about those other 30 million, so that's what I'm saying. I don't know that that kind of thing helped anybody just because they used it. And I'd rather work on trying to promote my links, you know, for people to go directly to my blog than go through another service to do it. That's just me. All right. Well, you know, I mean, as far as the... Uh I, when I was talking about Christy, I don't mean to pick on her because, wow, I mean, she's like an idol as far as icon as far I as I love uh, Christy. Yeah, I'll just say it I, now. I, I love her. There you I go. Do, well, I do too. But, you know, I'm, I'm, and I don't mean to pick on her. I'm just saying she's done very well. And at this point, she can afford to change what she's doing. And she has, she's made a lot of changes, and, and it's great. I, I, I mean, with all the different areas she's going, you know, the, her interests and stuff. But most of us can't afford to do that in the beginning. You know, we, you can't really change around. So, and we don't have time. We don't have, we're not, a lot of us aren't doing this full time. So when we go in automate, we're trying to save time. No, but the automate that she was talking about, but that we're talking about, is just automatically retweeting stuff that she wasn't reading. 
That's what we're saying. I okay. mean, she was automating, you know, one of those services, I don't know which one, and it was just sending out a whole bunch of stuff. And, you know, at a certain point, because I remember there was one tweet in particular, I can't remember exactly what the topic was, but I wrote her and I said, did you look at this first? And then she went and looked at it and realized that it wasn't anything that she really wanted to be associated with, and that's what made her start thinking about it. You know, and that's my point, is that some of these people are retweeting stuff that if they were reading it, they would probably say, oh, my goodness, I didn't want to promote that. That's what I'm talking about. And that's when she looked at it and said, you know what, I don't want to be that person who's not paying attention to the stuff. She still shares a lot of links and whatever, but now – I'm betting that she's looking at that stuff before it gets out there, and you know she at least now knows she agrees with it, and that's what the thing is. And I, if if all you're looking to do is save time by retweeting any bit of junk that's out there, who are you serving? I mean, if you know, your credibility isn't worth that. That's that's my thing. If you're gonna do that, you might as well just take every single guest post that someone sends you and put it on your blog. Don't even read it, and you know, go with that. Okay, I think, and, I think we can all agree with that. And social media isn't so much about what if you're talking, because if you're talking and there's a few people listening, that's okay. You may just be talking and nobody's listening, but when you really get into the social media where it's going to build you is when other people are talking about you. And the only way to do that is to be sending out quality. If you're sending out crap, they might be talking about you, but they're talking about you saying, Jesus, did you see you know, what they sent out? So I think that's where even when it gets into the automation, if you're not handpicking and you're sending out crap, they're not going to talk about you. And that is the whole goal of retweeting and hooking up even like my buffer. I read each article and I decide whether or not it's good enough for that account to send out. If it's not good enough, I would rather have only two tweets and then some manual retweets and manual, you know, writing rather than send out that last link and it be garbage. So until people are talking about you and what quality you are providing, then it's not working. Wow, this is two weeks in a row. Cheryl and I are agreeing on stuff. I'm going to send her some cookies if I can find them. Oh, wow. I was going to, you know, this is scary, and we're both picking on Brian. So this is pretty, <laughs> I told Brian and Ben I was going to play devil's advocate, and but Brian already knew where I stood on this, and I pretty much had an idea I, where Mitch did. I know where you both stand every time I ask a question. It's, it's, <laughs> I'm, I'm asking these questions for for the three people watching us. Oh, that's what it is. So, I mean, I'm, I am I already know know the answer to these questions, and I know I'm throwing myself under the bus. Um, I was just in a <laughs> hangout a couple of days ago, and we should move on here from this topic and go on to the next one since we're already going along here, but I was just in another hangout, and I'm not going to – I forgot his name, but he runs Easy Retweet. And, uh, yeah, that don't help. Yeah, and, and uh, that's something I'm going to be trying later on this week was uh, look at that. But I think we all can agree this the sites like Easy Retweet, Triver, <coughs> and anything like that, these are these are sites that have the ability to review the content before you publish it or share it. And that's I think we can all agree you should do that. You know, I mean I sh I probably should pay my bills, but sometimes I don't. <laughs> but I'm just saying we should, and I agree with that. But they, they do have the ability to do that, so that's a good thing. So it's not it's not uh, it's not really their problem. It's the the user. So the user's not doing it the way. So we we can't really the, the idea sides, yeah. behind it is good if the users will take responsibility and go for quality and and expect quality because if you're in that tribe and you're in there with you know a hundred people and 99 of them are putting up spin junk you should you should be able to say you know what I don't want to be involved with you I expect quality and that's what your followers should be getting well said okay and with all that uh, behind us now and I'm again I know you guys answers to these or but even though that you're not using curation tools, let's let's go with your opinions on them. Are curation tools like Scoop 
scoop it or scoop dot it and paper dot li paper li and storify a waste of time or worth worth uh, looking at what you you go first Mitch um uh, I'm gonna this is gonna be an odd answer I'm not sure if you know totally where I'm gonna stand I'm gonna say it depends I don't use paper li I don't use any of those I mean I, I just tell you the truth I mean I, I don't feel I need it I'm certainly putting out enough content and I don't need anything like that I I was of the opinion however that paper li I was actually for people who didn't have time to look at all the tweets during the day, so they were putting together certain topics that they wanted to see to see what showed up. I found it an interesting side benefit that I'll be sitting there and all of a sudden here comes a message saying that so-and-so's paper LI is out and my name is on it. It's like, oh wow, that's interesting. And so, you know, I always go to check out, okay, let's see what they put on there that I might have put on there earlier in the day if it's my blog post or if it's something else I shared. But that's what I kind of thought that was for. And I don't really know that it's a real benefit for a lot of other people. I, I mean, I don't know how much benefit it is. Uh, I know that when I go there, sometimes I may see an article that someone else wrote and say, oh, let's, let's go read that. But I don't know that everyone does that. Now, you mentioned Storify. And I find that interesting because someone used it here a couple of years ago when we had a local incident that happened and it blew up on Twitter. I mean, it, it just really blew up and it took off and it was weird. And one of the young ladies who, you know, was a student at Syracuse University put it in a Storify format and it showed the genesis of what, how it started and how everything went through Twitter. And when you read that, knowing the story, it's like, wow, look at, you know, how it all, you know, came together. I found that interesting. But it's the only Storify I've ever seen, so I don't know you know how it works across the board um, but content curation in general I've had people try to explain it to me and they're, you know content curation used to mean scraping and obviously I was totally against that now it's not what it necessarily means as much I, I you know what I, I just really don't know uh, you know some people say that it helps them a lot okay fine I, I you know it's not something that I can see myself using, and I don't know really what someone's purpose is. If they're saying they're just using it so that their blogs get ranked higher, personally, I don't, I don't know. I'm thinking, you know, if you're not really putting out your own content, this goes back to the quality versus quantity thing. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I used to meet, assume a little curveball at me there. That's all right. What about you, Cheryl? <laughs> I see, didn't know was, yeah. and the thing is, I don't have anything against them. Because whenever someone uses, say, uh, the paper allies, and one a Twitter account I run, a lot of people that we follow use that. And that's okay because it's one link. And lots of times if you go look, they do have something interesting on the page. Now, I can see where it would be handy if they have done their job and picked quality. Again, it, but... Brian, honestly, if I was following your CSC for you account and you put out a paper LI, I wouldn't even look at it because it's got all the triber and the scoop it and the, all the other stuff which I've already seen come through, and so it it wouldn't it wouldn't interest me. You mean but, you wouldn't you wouldn't want, you wouldn't read my paper or you wouldn't read my tweets? <laughs> kinda, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. <laughs> you got that right, Brian. <laughs> I'm pretty damn proud of you. You're quick. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all good. I, I mean, it, it, this all ain't about me. Uh, well, it is, but I'm not really. <laughs> no, but, but I, I mean, they do have a purpose if they're used right. But it, it's up to the the user to decide whether or not they want to just put something out in hopes that somebody clicks on it. I don't know how much traffic anybody gets from any of those. Well, I did a I did an interview and I just was looking it up while while we were discussing this a year ago, almost a year ago. What is this the 12? So unless a few days would be a year. I didn't even know the blog had been around for a year. That's cool. I missed my anniversary. Oh my god, it was supposed to be a big contest. Oh well, anyway. <laughs> um I, I interviewed uh, Karen. Was it Karen Woodham of? 
Blazing Minds. Yeah, Blazing Minds. And she's big on uh, Paper Ally, and she's got a, a big following. And I... I read I read her paper and it's interesting. I mean, to me, it's just like going to a website, a news website, almost for bloggers. I like blogging, so I go to that, and I that is one place that I will go and find content that I enjoy. Now, her interests aren't just blogging; there are other areas too, movies, music, that, but I like that too. Um, Scoop it is is another one that I use and. I like scoop it to go to you know different uh, well Elaine from uh, uh, bestbloggingtips.com has has an incredible paper and you know on scoop it and I like to click those links. Often I can find content that I would normally not find because I'm not running them you know within a certain circle. So I find new bloggers. In fact, I just found one this morning. That I had never have never heard of, and she was around well, way before Hot Blog Tips was, and she seems to be doing real well. So I agree, though, as, as long as we're doing it right, it's all good. So content curation, though, I I'm with Mitch. My opinion of it was scrapers when it first hit the you know blogosphere, whatever we want to call it, but. Things are changing, you know, and we we need to uh, move forward with it. And scraper sites, fortunately, seem to be dying down, and content curation seems to be improving blogging in general. I think. Hmm. Anybody disagree with that? I doubt it because it's pretty much genius on my part. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. No, I don't think it improves blogging. I think it changes it, but improves it. No. No, really? No. Okay, well. All right, uh, how, how, how do I, uh, this is my first time uh, doing this, so how do I mute Mitch? <laughs> <laughs> Too late. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I, 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 all right, so I, any, anybody else want to throw something else in here on either <laughs> one of those topics? Because uh, we're at 32 minutes, and I know that we've lost uh, two out of the three people that were watching us. No, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Cheryl? I, I think because we went from automation to stumble upon to dig to I don't even know where we've been today. Yeah, we covered a lot of topics. It's been a little random. Yeah. So I was going to say when I go to write this up for the, the metadata, I'm going to be like, what? Well, I mean, you know, yeah, I'm just glad you're doing that. I appreciate that too, Cheryl. <laughs> I do want to touch upon yeah, one thing what I write about you. that Brian said that I'm going to slightly disagree with. That being the thing that says that you will sometimes see a link that someone puts up and you go and look at it and you find that it's an old post. And, you know, one of the realities is that just because a post is a month old or 18 months old does not mean that that post is bad. Uh, I mean, you know, people are reading books that were written over 200 years ago, and that does not mean those books are bad or whatever. They, you know, they're still quality things. I like to look at, for instance, my business blog, where I write mainly about leadership topics. Just because I wrote on a topic two years ago or three years ago, even four years ago, does not mean that that leadership uh, advice that I gave is no longer good or valid. So, yeah, on, on my Facebook group, every once in a while, I will share a blog post that I wrote three or four years ago, maybe a newsletter that I wrote seven years ago, because the topic is still germane to what I think someone could learn something from. So don't always negate it. Having said that, that's one of the problems with the tweet old post. Not that you may not get a gem, but you might get a dog. You know, something that you well, just threw out there. And some topics are more evergreen. I mean, if you went and looked at SEO, you know, something to do with SEO or WordPress from, you know, 18 months, two years ago, it really probably is somewhat worthless. I mean, there That's there's garbage. so many changes. So if you've got an evergreen topic you know, that's a whole different thing. But if it's something that has to be kept up to date, then, yeah, you, you can't go back too far. Yeah. Well, plus, I mean, you're, plus, you're not – that's not really automating, Mitch, because you're doing that 
you're, you're doing that with the Facebook group is the tweets are sending this stuff out 24 seven, trying to get a couple of clicks onto their site, which to me just is, it's gotta be killing their uh, bounce rate. But anyway, they're, they're just sending out at random all day, all night when they're not doing their live stuff, old, garbage on their blogs as far as I'm concerned and it's, it's totally different than what you're talking about if you if you want to bring up something relevant or you're discussing something that you know just like I just mentioned a, a post a year ago with Karen you know that uh, was a, an interview with Karen that's relevant to this topic but that's completely different than automating tweets of over you know the uh, 12 blog posts that I've written in the last yeah. year well, because I, just wanted, I just wanted to clarify that though yeah. And you know, I just I thought it was important enough to clarify that that old does not necessarily mean um, that it's not topical. No, you're very topical. I mean, your stuff but is you, very topical. But you know, the thing is, even as far as men go, when you get old guys, they just aren't as valuable. <laughs> as, oh, oh, sorry, that's Don't way off. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, <laughs> see. see. Sir, sir, Ben's not here to be the young punk today, so she's taking on the young punk now. That's right. I figure out of the three of us, I got you know, I got a little <laughs> bit of time on y'all, so I figured I better get that jab in. <laughs> but you know, even with the three of us, we've got about what sixty, seventy years of blogging experience, so we're, we're all right. <laughs> sixty to seventy years. Wow. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, so we'll do this again next week, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Check your local listings for your time in your zone. And if you yeah. have questions, comments, you need to leave them below in the comment section. Oh, yeah, down there. See it? Duh. It's right there. All you got to do is type it out, and we'll either answer you right there on YouTube, or we might even pitch you in a Hangout and ask your question in the Hangout. Are we allowed to ask them to subscribe? Or is that like a, a no -no? Well, you can ask him anything you want, Brian. Oh, please subscribe. That's up there or there. I'm not sure. But one on, just click to sub uh, subscribe, and you can uh, know it each week when we do this. We do this. And you might week. as well remind them of the newsletter while you're at it. Go ahead and oh. remind them of the newsletter. The newsletter. Go to hotblogtips.com forward slash newsletter, and you will find content from me, Mitch, Cheryl, Ben Barden. And it's all good stuff. Two times, two issues a week. You don't, you're not bombarded by a bunch of stuff. You're not getting a lot of. Uh, it's not every kind of affiliate program that you <laughs> see. You know, we're not just, you know, come buy my latest product or whatever. It's real content, real blogging tips, and we're all partners and we all share it, sharing that. So come see us, hotblogtips.com. It's right there, <laughs> forward slash newsletter. I get this. I get this at a flea market yesterday. I'm very impressed. You know, I, I was wondering about that. The the new edition. Uh, since I have a window behind me, I'm certainly not going to be able to put up my little thing. Cheryl can actually tape something to her little curtain there. I've got one on my back of my car now. Oh cool. goodness! Check my Facebook page. Not hot blog tips, but my personal. I should put it on hot blog tips. It will be today. And go to the Facebook page. Not that I'm plugging that, but you should. You should. <laughs> Definitely like that page. It's great. Oh, but um, I've got I've got uh, one that in a blue color because black doesn't show good in a window, but and it's, the car is blue. But I've got that now on the back of my car, so I'm like a pro blogger now. So is that your car or Kim's car? Oh, it's Kim's car. I drive a 1992 <laughs> F150. It would not look good if I put that on there. Like I'm not listening to a thing that guy says. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's driving a 20 year old pickup truck. Yeah, he's. Yeah. There uh -oh. you go. We lost Cheryl. Yeah, that's okay. All right, so I'm going to close this thing out. If uh, I hope I hope uh, Cheryl comes back and maybe we can chat afterwards and discuss how well we did. But uh, I'd like to invite everybody next week, and that's it. Bye. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> bye.